Hey everyone, thank you so much for attending this call today. So today I power ups pay as you go. So before I talk more about pay as you go, earlier last year at Ignite, we announced a new way to pay for power ups, which is pay as you go model. So pay as you go is nothing but a new model to complement the existing offerings in the market to pay for your premium power ups using pay as you go. You only pay for what you use after you use it, and that provides you high level of flexibility to get started with premium. And this is based on a lot of feedback we got from the community that sometimes you know it's hard to predict the usage of a premium app. It is hard to convince your organization to adopt premium capabilities because of the licensing cost and the commitment associated with it. So because of that, we introduced this new way pay as you go to pay via Azure subscription for your actual usage after you have used the premium capabilities and derived value out of it instead of pre committing to the premium capabilities and paying for the licenses. So today in the market, we have these two subscription plans to pay for power apps premium apps. You can do that either by purchasing a per app plan or you could do that by purchasing a per user plan, which gives you access to all premium apps across all environments per user. And these are the two ways you can pay for power apps today. With pay as you go, we introduced a third method in which you only pay for what you use after you use it using your active Azure subscription. So one key thing, the difference between the existing subscription plans and the pay as you go plan is that you only pay for the active users. What active users mean is that your app could be shared with thousands and thousands of users, but only if a subset of users end, end up using that app in a month, then you only pay for that subset of users. And we'll talk about that in a little bit of detail. Moreover, with pay as you go, you get some Dataverse capacity so that you can again use your premium apps with Dataverse connector with ease without worrying about the storage. And you can easily scale as your needs grow and just pay again for the overages using Azure subscription. So basically it is super simple to use. All you need is an active Azure subscription. You connect your power platform environment to the Azure subscription. And as soon as you do that, your environment becomes a pay as you go environment and any usage for power apps or Dataverse within that environment is now charged against Azure subscription on the actuals and all the billing details of how many apps you consumed, what is the actual usage that was consumed for an app, how much Dataverse capacity was used. All of that granular information is available in the Azure portal, as well as a much more detailed report is available to you in the Power Platform Admin Center. Again, pay as you go. One of the reasons is to provide you the flexibility to try out Power Apps Premium, understand what's the usage pattern in your organization before you adopt it. Or there are certain scenarios where pay as you go might work better. So, you know, just to explain, in some scenarios, we know that developers or IT teams already have Azure subscriptions that they use for paying for other Microsoft services that they use. So this just provides you the flexibility to use the same payment mechanism for Power Platform as well. Sometimes it is hard to predict the licensing usage. It's hard to predict how many users would use it. And because of that, it's hard to get the agreement from the procurement team to get started with Power Apps Premium. So this just gives you a very easy, low friction way to get started with Power Apps without any upfront cost or commitment. And once you establish usage patterns over time, you can purchase the prepaid licenses if you know you get better discounts or a better deal on it. Sometimes pay as you go is actually much better than the subscription plans, especially in cases of seasonal apps or occasional apps. For example, if you have an HR app, that needs to be used by the entire organization, but you know that it will only be used by a subset of users over a year. So you don't want to license every single user to use a premium license or a premium app. So in those cases where you have seasonal apps or occasional apps, pay as you go works great because then you only pay for the active usage using Azure subscription and you don't have to license anybody. Finally, this is one of the feedback, one of uh, the ways customers in the preview program have been using it is to split costs seamlessly within their units in the organization. So for example, if HR department wants to make sure that they have an easy way to understand 
how many apps and how many users do they need to pay for? Similarly, a different department wants to make sure that they have easy cost splitting mechanism and just pay for the active usage within their business units. Pay as you go is great. You can use different Azure subscriptions for each business unit or for the same Azure subscription. You can use different resource groups and make sure that you're only paying for the active usage for your business units without really any hassle of splitting bills at the end of the year. So again, pay as you go is great for anybody who wants flexibility via Azure subscription or anybody who wants a low friction way to get started with Power Apps before really committing to Power Apps Premium or in use cases where you have seasonal or occasional apps. So now to understand really how to set up pay as you go because you know it provides a lot of great value. The good thing about pay as you go is it's super simple to set up. There isn't a multi days or a multi step process. Anybody with the right permissioning, anybody who is an environment admin or a power platform admin or a global admin has the capability to go set up pay as you go. So all you need to do is you just need an active Azure subscription and then you go link that Azure subscription to a power platform environment. You can do that in the power platform admin center or within power apps directly for the app that you really want to use for pay as you go. As soon as you connect an Azure subscription to a Power Platform environment, that environment becomes a pay as you go environment. What that means is all the apps within that environment are now charged against the Azure subscription. Then you can finally share your apps with however many users you want to share with. No worries, you'll only be charged for the users who actually end up using the app. And then whoever uses the app and whatever Dataverse charges are incurred, the entire bill is visible to you in Azure cost management, where you can see for Power Apps, for Dataverse, how much charge is incurred. In the Power Platform Admin Center, you'll get a much granular report. Azure portal also provides you a great visibility. It allows you to set up budgets and it allows you to set up alerts for the spending. Let's say you want to set up an alert for a particular threshold so that you want to make sure you don't go over budget for your organization. You can easily do that. So Power Apps Pay As You Go leverages the existing cost management capabilities available in Azure so that you don't have to learn any new concepts. You just leverage how you've been using Azure subscription so far. Now, in order to really understand that, how are these charges really incurred? How does the bill gets generated? How do you use it? So think about it. So we have two different kinds of meters to make sure that you are able to pay for Power Apps and Dataverse via Azure subscription. So for Power Apps meter, you are charged for any active user who uses an app. An active user is anybody who opens an app at least once in a month. So let's say I as a user use the app 10 times in a month. I'll only be counted as a one active user and I will be charged only one time in a month. Similarly, if I as a user uses two different apps in a month, I'll be counted as two active users and I'll be charged for both the apps that I use in a month. And I can repeatedly use the same app over and over again in a month. No problem, we'll only be charged once. Also, if you already have a per user license, there are cases where you already are licensed. So in those cases, we just exclude you and you're not charged again. So if you look at this example in one, one only two users use an app. So you've charged $20, $10 per active user. In month three, only one user uses an app. So as you see, multiple users have access to the app, but in different months, different users are using the app. So you're only getting charged for the actual usage after the usage has already incurred. Similarly for the Dataverse, so with pay as you go, as soon as you link your environment to an Azure subscription, you get one GB database and one GB file capacity in your environment. And this is to make sure that you're able to use Dataverse connector easily and run your premium apps. So you already get this capacity free every month, one GB database and one GB file. And then as your data needs grow, you can easily scale without any extra effort and then you only pay for the overages. For example, in the first month, let's say you go beyond 1 GB database capacity, you spend 1.5 GB database capacity, so you only pay for that 0.5 GB database capacity. In month two, you did not go over, so you don't pay anything because that 1 GB capacity is already allocated to you. Finally, let's look at the demo to understand how this works end to end. So when you look at this, this is a Power Apps portal. From an app, you can easily go to the app setting and set up pay go. All you need to do is just go to the setting, select pay as you go, 
provide a name of a billing policy, basically provide a name to an association that you create between an Azure subscription and an environment. You choose your active Azure subscription, your resource group, and you click connect subscription. This connects your environment to the Azure subscription. Now all apps within this environment will be charged against Azure subscription. So the process is pretty simple. So let's say now go to a different app in the same environment. So as you see, pay as you go is already set up. And now let's say you want to add new environments. You already have this Azure subscription connected to one environment. You want to add more or you want to remove some other environments. You can easily go to the Power Platform Admin Center from within Power Apps and you can edit this billing policy, which is an association between an Azure subscription and an environment, and you can add new environments or remove environments. So this environment is already added like we just created in Power Apps. You can add a new environment to the same billing policy. So now both the environments will be charged against Azure subscription. So as you see, the experience is pretty simple. A couple of clicks, all you need to do is just select an active Azure subscription. Finally, as an admin, Right. If I want to understand what am I being charged for, who is really using these apps or consuming dataverse capacity in an environment, you can download this report, which provides you a very, very granular view of who is using your apps, who is consuming the dataverse capacity, when did the charges occur, how much is the overage, how are you being charged? So this very granular. And then finally, you can go to the Azure portal where you will see these resource groups and you would be able to see what charges are being incurred on the power platform for power apps or dataverse if you have any questions let us know in the chat i'm not able to see the chat right now but if there are any questions that you want to discuss or if you have any feedback please send us an email or feel free to ask now thanks there are a ton of questions. That, was, that was great there's <laughs> there's a bunch and sean's going sean's through them going too, through them too. Um, april did you spot did any you in spot particular any that sean has not answered yet um yeah, let me see. There's sorry, I gotta scroll through the list because, like I said, there's a lot. <laughs> so, um, I, I don't know if this one was addressed from Peter. Is it possible to mix pay as you go and per user, or does users with per user license are also charged if we use pay as you go on an app? So basically, can you mix and match? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Uh, so yes, you can use pay as you go and per user licenses together. So let's say you set up pay as you go for one environment and in that environment, some users are licensed with per user licenses and some of the users are completely unlicensed. So you will only be paying for the users who are unlicensed. Users who have per user licenses are not included in the meters. They are not included for the Azure subscription bill. So you're not paying for the users who are already licensed. Regarding the second part where can you pay per app? No, pay as you go capability is available at an environment level. So you really connect an Azure subscription to a power platform environment. And then all apps within that environment are automatically charged against Azure subscription. What you can, however, do is you can go and you can turn off Paygo for an individual individual app in the in the power apps portal. So you can go to the settings and there is a toggle where you go turn off Paygo for an app. But know that if you turn Paygo for an app and you don't have a per user license, then you don't have a way to access an app because you blocked access to Azure subscription and the user is not licensed. So you're really blocking their access. But yes, you can mix and match per user licenses and pay as you go. Awesome. Um, the other one I saw too from Rick, um, is there any way to put a do not exceed cost in the pay as you go model so the cost can be budgeted? As far as I understand, and Sean, feel free to chat in. So Azure does allow you to allow you the capability to set up alerts. So you can set up alerts for whenever you exceed, but I don't think there is a way to block access to users for an app, at least on the Power App side. There is no way to block access as soon as you exceed a particular limit, but Azure provides this capability where you can set up alerts so that you are informed as soon as you know that you know you're going over the budget that you have set up and then you can take the measures, measures to stop that maybe you can reach out to the users who are incurring the charges based on the detailed cost that we provide in part you can you can turn off payment for particular apps that you think are incurring those charges 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The last thing I mentioned on that front is um, the way many Azure customers manage this is through uh, alerts and cost management, like you mentioned. Alerts can not only message you, but you can also script actions to take place. So a lot of people script IT admin actions to take place. And I've thought about doing a blog post someday on how you would maybe script some Power Platform admin actions to take place when you exceed certain costs. Uh, but in theory, that should be possible to customize what actions you would like to take place based on what makes sense for your organization. Awesome. I don't know, Todd, how much time we have for more questions because there's uh, I think we should probably just hold the questions for just following up in, in email or continuing in the chat uh, so we can finish up on time with the rest of the call. Right. Yeah, it, look, it looks like uh, Sean got to many of them already here. I see he answered a good four or five of them, so that's great. Thanks for coming on and, and showing us that, Kavishi. I have a real quick question for you. It creates a resource group I saw in Azure. Does it put anything inside the resource group, or is that just so you can hook it to the billing in Azure? It does put um, a Power Platform account resource in the resource group. <laughs> And the function of that resource is purely to hook up billing to Azure. So we have a way to connect the environments and Power Platform to the right uh, billing subscription in Azure. That's the only function of that resource, but that does get put into that resource group as a hidden resource. But you can go and see it in the Azure portal. Um, you can also tag that resource if you want uh, to help out with cost management and budget allocation scenarios. Uh, that's all possible, just like any other Azure resource that you have. Cool. So nothing you have to manage or configure or do inside of there. It's just all plumbing, essentially. That's right. Okay, cool.